Welcome to Circle of Hearts Radio. Journey with Grandmother Aliyah as she enters her magical world of relics, sacred sites, and ancient crystal skulls. Meet with exciting trailblazer authors and individuals shifting the consciousness of humanity. Send her your questions to be answered on air on her monthly segment, Ask the Oracle. And now your host, Grandmother Aliyah, in this sanctuary on the airwaves on Own Times Radio. Sanctuary. I'm Alaya, and with me today is Charlie the Riverman Structure. And also, we have an addition here of my fur kid, Molly, the my pup, who insists to be in my arms. So, if you hear any strange noises, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving fair warning. You know, she, she insists that, you know, she has to be in my arms today. But, um, Times are very chaotic. Times are very upsetting. Times of people are feeling, oh, this is the you know the end of the world. But it's only the end of the world as we know it. I, I think Charlie and I had talked about doing a show on all the violence and the need for balance between the male and you know feminine and the healing of ancestral lines and cultures, and there's so much information, you know, to come through. But I think one point, if you are listening, is to stop and just come from your heart. Do not, all that you see is just um, illusion being craziness and emotions and all of you out there are center light points and view it as that so I guess if that's part of my message today is stop and don't take all of this in and don't add to the negative negativity what do you think Charlotte uh, I think you're uh, right on 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 top of it Aliyah I know that we started uh, talking about this show, uh, starting with the uh, injustice of the uh, court case where the woman who was unconscious and was raped and the um, judge who uh, just allowed this person to walk away with uh, basically a slap on the wrist and telling the world that uh, – Rape is acceptable. And and I, think, I was going to say, and I think this actually even started before that I popped in my head with Bill Crosby in the States. Okay. The unconscious woman, the, the ah. dominating male. Mm, okay. Thank you for that. Because, yeah, it, it, it goes, and we can trace it back further than that as well. Oh, yeah. But I, I think that this is what's happening for everybody right now is we're – we're looking at what's playing on around us and um, really being triggered at a very deep level emotionally within ourselves, uh, whether it's through things we've experienced or witnessed personally in this lifetime or in previous lifetimes, or it could be ancestral. And it brings me to uh, this place of um, of rage. And I remember posting a, a an article about holy rage and and holy rage was that fire the the fire within us that just says if i if i i can't take any more just let's let's burn it all and start all over mm. and <sighs> you and i both have had a couple of weeks now to temper that off mm -hmm. but then <laughs> then in the midst of that we have the orlando issue where yeah. um Innocent, innocent people who are just out, I, and I'm not even going to go into the, the, the separation of uh, sexuality or genderism, or just a group of innocent people out enjoying the evening have to be cut down like, you know, grass in a yard with no respect for life whatsoever. These are crimes against humanity. These are not just crimes. These are not just um, bad things happening. 
This is a self-destructive process that humanity is perpetrating on itself. And so with that, I just look at it and just, you know, this is what we wanted to talk about is how a, how did we get here? Where do we go from here? How do we rationalize this? We could do probably a whole year of shows on this, but I just wanted oh, yeah. to in- introduce it to people because I know everybody out there is feeling this uh, on some level. You can't shut this out of your heart. You can shut it out of your mind temporarily, but it stays with your heart. And it influences your thoughts and actions uh, in everything we do. And so we need to, I think, find a, a way for each of us to come to terms with that and then move beyond it to help shift and change it. Yeah, I think all this, the re, this is, we're constantly in all different cultures since the beginning of time, whenever that was. Mm-hmm. If you could go back as far as you could go back and you look at different cultures, isolated groups, even, you know, you're including Christianity in there, you're including the Romans in there, you're including the Greeks in there, you're including all kinds of groups in there. Violence, power. It, um, yeah. It, sub- it, submission. It, this is true. And culturally, somebody, somebody presented the question to me, something about um, Americans, things happen in America like this because we have no culture. Uh, personal culture as Americans, and I and I thought about that, and I said, how, how, what a, how do you, how do you justify your insanity? And, and I mm-hmm. said, you know, to me it was like culture is just a collective community habit. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it not against humanity, and it brings to mind the albino children in Africa. Now, there are still people today who are believing because of their culture that it's okay to chop up an albino child. And I'm not going to mince my words here, but chop up and take body parts from a living child and use them in their magical or spiritual practices. That's a cultural teaching. And so how do we can carry that from who knows when, the beginning of humanity, to this day and not address that? And, and, so, and then people say, oh, well, it's just, it's just humanity. Really? And this is what we've been doing. We've been saying, oh, it's just a rape. The girl was unconscious. She was drunk. Or we blame the woman. Her, she dresses provocatively. Okay, well, what about the men who are raped? Did they dress provocatively? We don't talk about the men who are raped. We don't talk about the adults who are murdered for body parts. No. Not just children in Africa for a cultural or religious ceremony. We're killing people and taking their body parts because somebody needs a new lung and a heart. This is the heinousness. It all has to do with power. Power and the, the 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 people want to take that power and fly with it, and then there's people in the background who have made people aware of you know different things. As in other situations, there's always there's always you know the the light that says that it shines on a situation, and there's always those people involved, and then somebody. It says, uh, oh, like I said, uh, I have a thing about humanity healing. And so does Charlie. And it's, the truths are being shown. And a lot of times, a lot of the work in the background is being dismissed. And somebody's, and other people do the feeling of power that enfolds them, decides, well, I'm going to take all all this credit and this happens in cultures this happens in politics this these are things we need to be aware of it happens in every aspect of our daily lives whether it's going to the supermarket or boarding an airplane 
or you know wherever we are and we're engaging each other this is a human illness this is a human epidemic and i wrote that earlier today um it's about integrity and and, and the integrity of humanity is at stake here um and it's a it's an it's at epidemic proportions right now and it has to stop yeah i agree it has to i think we're all at this collective point where we're all saying we feel in our hearts no no more. We're seeing all that's happening. Our eyes are clearing and we're going, oh, wow, the, you know, things are messed up. You know, we're seeing people that are in power, whether it's male, female, um, politicians. Ad- adult, you know. child, doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. That's true. I mean, we're all human. We're all, it's all, we're all souls. But it's not the light and darkness, you know, evil and all this. No, we're going to keep on repeating these patterns until everybody sees what is happening and then decides, no, no more. You know, we have to come from a a different direction. But as it's a slow process, not everybody sees it at the same time. And then you get the confusion. So I'm really probably confusing everybody here. Jump no, in, I'm, you're, not, you're not confusing me. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm right with you. Um, and and before we go to the brink, I mean, just before we oh, came yeah. on, <laughs> I didn't see. Uh, we what happened was um, I listened to the news program, and and it's for some reason I started picking out words out because I can't listen to the news. So because of, of of all of this heinousness, but the three words that I picked out, and actually there were four. And I, I ended up doing a diagram in there, four powers, nasty, personal, divisive, and violent. Now, think about that during the break. Oh, okay. You got me four, thinking. And, and, and who knows what words are going to come up in this break, but I've just picked out words, and those were the four that I picked out of the. Yeah. Good timing, Charlie. I'm getting good at this. <laughs> Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, join us, Lisa Berry and Michelle Carter, every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for the Mindset Makeover, What's Possible? Get ready to become present, clear, and unstuck and start living fully, led by your heart. While you listen and feel this transformation through vibration of word, sound, and song, you'll open up to what's possible and experience your shift. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on OM Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. A Conscious Lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Thinking, which is never good. But <laughs> anyway, what I was shown was looking 
as we go back to ancestral healing, we go back to cultures, a variety of cultures and different timelines. There has always been two aspects, good, evil, but I don't believe in necessarily good and evil. There's always that gray zone. And in the gray zone, we have the word bully, a way of bullying us to obtain power, to have other groups submissive. And I believe as souls in my heart, we have chosen to experience both sides as part of our lessons in this earthly drama. And I think a lot of us becoming a little more balanced, as you know, Charlie had brought up, you know, about the healing of the ancestral lines and all this violence that's being shown to us, it's triggering us and saying, we're not promoting uprisings, we're just saying, look at it, see it, and realize we can do something about this. Come from our hearts. No more bullies. Um, I'll let you speak. That was my two cents. No, no, that's that's a no. That's a very good um, contemplation on those four words because this this is what we're seeing. It is it is the art of bullyism, if you would put it in those terms, and it is ancestral, and it and it stems from a time when. We were peaceful beings. Uh, humans were basically peaceful and lived in communities where there was harmony and balance. And most of them were uh, matriarchal societies. And um, so there was a balance of the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And as I said pre-show, I see a lot of the rise of the divine feminine um, pushing, you know, the energy pushing against the patriarchal society that was formed way back then and that in in my visionary sense i look at it as um, the the masculine energy which is highly competitive which is um has has turned into a nightmare and whereas the hunter gatherers would go out and hunt and the, the males would uh, team together the women took care of the community and and the children and held the community together because of the divine feminine energy. So when the we became um, agra ag agrarian and started to, you know, farm and settle down in areas, the men would still go on hunt, but then they would co always come back to the community instead of just running, 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 proving themselves to each other and and creating these games. So they created games, but what did they create? They created war games. They created games of violence and destruction. And this has been playing out in society. And um, they got to the point where they started to uh, abuse and diminish the women in their tribes and their communities and take their power away. And uh, they did that by bullying. And they did that by intimidation. And they did that by rape. And they did that by... Uh, uh, physical abuse. And what do we see playing out today? This is exactly what we're seeing playing out today. And it's not, you know, it's not all men. There are women who have uh, decided to, to be part of that whole paradigm because it's about power. It's about the, the next three words that I caught out of that newscast was control, takeover, and nonstop. And that's what happens. We become a non-stop controlling society. And I was um, just going to add a little bit to what you said. And no, go right ahead. Take, 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 take the <laughs> ear with that. But so that's that. But that's the direction that we've we've been heading in, and we're now at the the, the crescendo point. I think the like you said it is the divine mother rising. I mean, how look? Just look at life. We're always afraid of the mother. She is both nurturing and don't get her mad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the thing is, even for women, you know, now that uh, a lot of women are taking it, okay, yes, yay, you know, down with the men, whatever. This is wrong. You have to realize as souls, we experience both male and female. And for Women groups to say, hey, 
we're coming to power. It's just as far as men groups saying we're coming to power. Balance. Recognize what doesn't work and come to a peaceful balance within the heart so that we all get together and there's no more like job. One of the words Charlie uses is control. That will be obliterated from our vocabularies because we won't know what it means anymore. But I think this is part of the learning lesson, even for women. You know, being a woman is saying, yes, I'm going to stand up for my power. But, but don't confuse it with what you don't like to see with the, the, the male aggression. Don't become that. You need to balance yourself and to be the nurturer that you are, but also to have, you know, to keep your worth. So that's from the female perspective. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, that's, that's beautiful. Um, you know, in, in rightfully so, um, we, we've seen it throughout history, um, rising and gathering of women in power and strength. And, and, and many times, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have had the changes that we've had in society. But as you say, what happens is uh, many of them forget and then they take on their masculine attributes and become, which are not always beneficial. They're um, very aggressive and they're um, very destructive. And so, again, it's this balancing of energies that each of us are, are having to deal with every day. And as we see it play out in the world, in you know the, the crimes against humanity, this is the struggle that we have is because within us we have both of those attributes and those energies. And how do we do balance them personally and not take one side – over the other side and yet realize that if we don't come to terms within ourselves then nothing is going to change outside of ourselves no and then you have the um other let's put other communities you know you have uh even the word trans it transgender or the people or the children coming in that are a mix of balanced male, female, these are looked at as the oddity. You have to really look at them. What is scaring people? This is the beauty of a soul, of a balanced soul. But some people are freaked out. They're, they're saying, no, this is wrong. This is, uh, this is against culture. This is against religion. Against, no. against, against culture. I love those words. Against culture. Because here we go with this culture idea that culture is, is, is um, something that's supposed to be uh, praised and raised to the heavens as some supreme deity. Culture is basically what a collective consciousness agrees on. It, is, it has nothing to do based in reality. It's just you and I agree to say this is acceptable and that's not acceptable. That's where culture comes from. And this is and what you brought up before, which I'm saying we're hanging to break in a few minutes. Something for people to think about. Communities. Right. Culture, communities, isolation, control. <laughs> One group thinks they're better than the other group. This is where the violence comes in, the male, female. You know, here it, we go. No, and and so, but this is this is really playing out at a at a higher degree, um, at least in my lifetime. It's not that it hasn't played out in history before; it has in many times. And every time, if you look at a burst of violence within the collective consciousness of humanity, whether it's a world war or just tribal wars, etc. These were those culmination points where humanity needed to shift. They needed to make a decision and a better decision and a new decision based on their hearts rather than their minds. And most of the times we've consistently chosen from the mind. Mm -hmm. And this is where it has to end. This is the last time. So... I, when we heading to the break, there were three more words that are, are much more sure. positive. Um, Good. <laughs> but <laughs> and those were balance, healing, and stop. Yeah. 
And, and so I would think, you know, on like, <laughs> think on that as we go to the break as what would be healing, what would create balance and what would create a stop because this is the only way we're going to get through this is for us to focus on the positive side and we're bombarded with the negative side and 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 it's played out because it serves a purpose it serves uh, a a purpose for those who are uh, controlling and have been controlling and they've been the leaders of the world and i, I don't even think they realize they, this is part of their soul journey that they they're putting out there for people's collective awareness many many times i have to look at that and i and i have to forgive them because i don't think a lot of them know exactly what they're doing i agree and and and, and i may be just a pollyanna about that but i i look at these people i look at the, many of the leaders of the world and uh, when it comes to trying to rationalize what they're saying and what they're doing there is no there is no concrete evidence that they actually have a plan. Uh, it looks like a plan from the outside, from, from most of us, but I'm not so sure. They, they, I, 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 my personal feeling, it's a form of insanity. Yeah, and I think they put this out there yeah. so that we, it, it's so crazy that we can't help miss it. It's not subtle. It's like no. in your face. And there is trapped. <laughs> And they're as trapped in it as we are. And I, that's, that's what I'm, I, in the past couple of weeks, that's what I've had to look at. They're as trapped in this paradigm as we are. And the only way out is to co-create our way out. Oh, we've got an interesting second half coming up. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. And like it's fun. Like I said, we always tell you, Charlie and I have absolutely no idea what's going to come out of our mouth. <laughs> No, no, and and I think that's the beauty because it comes from our hearts and not from our our heads, and that's um, that's why they're called uh, heart to soul talks. Is right. it's all right? So now we can put our thinking caps on. <laughs> the future of internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. As difficult as it is to believe. There are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. The name is Bond. James Bond. No, the name is Joe. The Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Old Times Radio. So tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on oldtimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. We're back. In the beginning of the show, I was strongly urged to say the word stop. And I think that's important because it... it for those that um, are here to listen or curious, 
stop, be still, and listen to your heart. You're in the middle of this tornado of energy, crazy energy. And the only way that you can keep yourself together is stop and listen to your heart. Do not take in all the the this whirlwind of energy around you of emotions. Uh, that that's a beautiful analogy. Um I I've never experienced a tornado. Uh but I haven't I can, either and I don't But I can it. only imagine and, and when 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 you said the the whole process of it, that's what I was watching in my mind was what do what happens when a tornado comes you stop you you hide you go down into your basement or you go into a say and and you stop and i can only imagine that the only sound other than the destruction around you would be your heartbeat i would imagine your heart pounding so hard that it's almost deafening I, that and and maybe you know, maybe I'm wrong on that. And for those of you who have endured tornadoes, I, I send you blessings of peace, light, and love because I find it would be a horrible experience. But that's the vision I had. And so stop and, and listen to your heart. And then when people emerge after the wind, uh, the crazy mass wind that has tore up everything that we've known in reality, and they walk out, and they survey, and they see destruction, and all that was past is gone in the now. But yet, there's new beginnings too. Right there's I, I, there's a there's despair, and yet there's gratitude because you know it's a combination of two, and I think that's part of what we're going to see come out of um, this shifting uh, from us stopping going into our hearts and asking the mind within our hearts, not the mind in our heads, but the mind, the universal mind, the collective conscious mind, the divine mind, you know, where do I stand in here and what, what you know, how do I deal with this? Uh, I think that's what's going to happen is we're going to, we're going to come back out of that and the first thing you do is people get together and people uh, help and assist and and there's a big collection of assistance. Everybody helps try to dig what's valuable, what's left of their lives that was valuable out of the rubble, and and rebuild again. And and that's what I see it. You know, again the the analogy of the phoenix rising, etc. These are all metaphors for. Um, the hope, uh, the the possibility that we are not victims, and this takes me all the way back to the reason we started this show was about the victimization of that poor per, that I'm not gonna say poor, but that that woman, and and the the heinous position that she was placed in, and how. She has to rebuild her life. All of us as a collective whole of humanity are going to have to rebuild humanity. Mm. I totally it's, agree. It's not just about you and I. It's not just about the good guys and the bad guys. And, when, you know, I, I was thinking about it, the word stop. And I said, what do we need to stop? And it's blaming. We need to stop the blame game and blaming he said, she said, this one did that. This, that. We're all blaming everybody. Let's look inside of ourselves and say, what am I doing? And take what responsibility, too. And take responsibility and have the integrity to look at yourself squarely in the mirror and, and, and say, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to honor who I am as this beautiful human this beautiful soul in a human physicality in the third dimension on planet earth and so there that's when the healing begins so you know there and that's when the balance starts to begin and we start to balance and and heal uh not only each other it starts with healing and 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 ourselves and stop blaming ourselves and stop taking on these victim roles and realize 
that we have, as we said, the first three months of our shows was choices. We have choices, thousands and thousands of choices that we can make every day in every situation. And even if we make a choice in error, we can change it Mm -hmm. because we have that power. We're powerful beyond the human recognition. And this is what has been taken away from us by others controlling us is that's what they don't want. They don't want to see your individual power. Yeah, no, it, it's it's true. I mean, I know we're really putting so many thoughts out there, but if we just get out the idea that, like I said, the first half of the show that we showed, oh, well, this is pretty much the past, the negative. The past no longer exists. We are in the right now. I mean, we bring through a lot. I think Charlie brought up the idea of trying to squeeze everything through that needle's eye into the nail. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, yeah. some of it's just not going to go through. And I think it's, it's, again, that choice. You're making the choice of um, where am I going to come from? Do I want to live constantly like this? How many times do I have to come back and experience all this? You know, where am I going to do? Stop. Make your choice. Be responsible for your words. Words are power. Think responsible for your emotions. Emotions add to the collective energy. Be responsible. Stop. Think. Come from your heart. No, I did my two cents. Go ahead. <laughs> well, no, it, it, no, you're absolutely right. Um, and I don't mean to be right or wrong, but what what we've been basically programmed to believe is that those little thoughts are meaningless, that they have no power, that they're insignificant, and it's going to take 45 million bazillion people to think like that in order for anything to happen. Well, of course, somebody that wants to be in control of you is going to tell you that because your standing in your power threatens their paradigm of control. And so we don't have to go to war. We don't have to attack. We don't have to do anything except say, no, I'm, this is my choice. This is my power, and I'm going to stand in it. And if it doesn't resonate with you, that's fine. But I'm not going to deny myself any longer. I'm yeah. not going to de- deny or change the divine being that I am, this this creation of that which we call God or some supreme uh, creator. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's time to end this. It, it's been a wonderful game. I don't want to say wonderful game, but it's been, you know, it's, 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 it's much like a video game and we've been playing it too long. The game is old. It's, it's time to put it on the shelf and forget it even existed. And then you know, 200 years from now, oh, remember when we used to play blah, blah, blah. And that's what it is. It's leave it in the, in the collective memory, uh, in the Akash. Uh, but let's get it out of the third dimensional or the fourth dimensional energy. Let's move it beyond. Let's move beyond that. The eye of the needle. You know, we hear that as individuals. But think of it as a collective. The whole collective of humanity is going to go through the eye of the needle. And now there's got to be a lot of stuff to be let go of. Can't take it with you. I was going to say, we also have to get rid of words of the old, like power. Why can't we replace them with inner light? Yeah. Well, or something like that. It is true. It's interesting. I had a statement that um, I resonated with and I still resonate with is I defy separation. And when it was presented to me, I went, bingo, Charlie, you've been doing this your whole life. So that resonated with me. And I said it to somebody who doesn't say negative, what they feel is negative statements. And they reversed it and say, I unify, I, I, I embrace unification. And I said, wow, awesome. That is so beautiful. Mm-hmm. We just shift it around. And so if it doesn't resonate with you, shift it to something that does resonate with you. But keep the 
the the concept of a new world of a world of balance and harmony and 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 light keep that vision use whatever your words that are going to resonate with you but but focus on the vision focus on the vision of humanity coming together again as it was in the beginning uh, and as we are in other states of our beingness, which I won't go into. Yeah, but, we'll try that on another one. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the reality. This is what we talked about the children coming, the children coming with their DNA, um, if not fully intact, at least more intact and more organized than ever before. And we need to prepare the path for them. We need to prepare the earth for them and the third dimension for them. It is our responsibility. Granted, maybe nobody did it for me personally. I mean, I could, I could sit on my pity pot and cry all day. But the reality is, it doesn't matter. I'm aware of this. And so it's my awareness that needs to carry me forward. When I become aware of something that is not working, do I sit there in the middle of it not working? No, I move on and either let it go entirely or I try to repair it in some manner that makes it better than it was. So, you know, here we're going, oh, gee, another minute we'll be on our next commercial. It's based on how time goes, huh? Yeah. But I think it's all the thoughts that we present to you is to empower you. Again, I don't, don't like the word power. But to have you step out into your full being. That's where the, muse, the muse, misuse of the word power was. Yes. You are the energy behind it all. Honor it and embrace it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here. The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffey and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleash, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleash, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. It goes, I'm given, given this image, and I'm trying to sit there and figure out what it's supposed to be. It, well, let me see if it matches the words I just wrote. Go for it. <laughs> the thinker. I, think. I had the words 
you know, all these shows that we see these ideas, is, you know, is to bring you back to think from your heart. And I don't know who did the sculpture. I keep on getting well down. I, I don't know. You know, the, the guy with his hand on his knee thinking. Mm-hmm. And to, for collectively, for everybody that has eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart that's open, to be the thinker, to realize your path in this light, the, your unfolding light, that it, as it gets brighter and brighter, how you affect everything. And the outcome doesn't have to be negative. And it won't be negative because people are awakening. So be the thinker. Now you go ahead, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's interesting how I jot these little words down and stuff as I hear them. on, And, and then uh, it, it, it's funny. Uh, I, I I just find it quite amusing. My my guides and my angels are just amazingly uh, uh, filled with just joy. Uh, but it, it's funny. There was a the, in the ad commercials in the ads. There was uh, talking about dating, and I don't know. There was at, and I'm really and I'm listening. I'm saying so. The words that came through was um, uh, basically the message: Why don't we just date yourself? date ourselves go on a date with yourself Hmm. and um you know part of the healing process i see it is most of us really don't know who we are and what we are and what better way to find out than to go on a date with yourself take yourself out and 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 find out where what parts of you are not resonating with you I mean, when we go on a date with somebody, this is what we're doing. We're looking for compatibility. We're looking for harmony. We're looking for balance. We're looking for something that uplifts us or encourages us or uh, inspires us and the other person uh, as if we're looking for those parts of ourselves that that complement us. Well, why don't we just go on a date with ourselves? I, it sounds simple, um, but I mean, just the concept of that. I want you to play with that concept. And and the, there was another ad, and the words were, and I don't even know, but it was destination unlimited. Where are we headed? Where are we headed through all of this um, shifting from a patriarchal society to a balanced society, a homogenous society? In essence, we're all transgender. We both have male and female. Uh, th- this is nothing new. This is this is the nature of humanity. The only reason we, at some point, we chose to separate those and condemn one versus the other or say this is wrong and this is right. We made that choice. Mm-hmm. There is no supreme being that's coming down anywhere and saying don't do this, don't do – this is a collective mind of humanity. And once we surrender – to the fact that we are the creators of this nightmare, we won't ever be able to fix it because it was not created outside of ourselves. It was created within ourselves. So maybe we need to go on a date with ourselves and see how and where this is being created from. And a few minutes back ago, I was uh, something about there was the words "the best of the best," and before that, I wrote. I said, you know. Why is why is this happening for us? It's mother. Mother is calling you. The divine mother of us all. The divine mother energy is calling us all. We are the children. And we are the children. And who is she calling? She's calling the best of the best. And that's each and every one of you who are willing to step into the field of possibilities where you can look at yourself and stand up in your power and say, this no longer serves the beautiful golden heart of life that I am. Very, very cool. (laughs) And in an instant, and in an instant, be a hundred years, but in an instant, things will begin to change. And so as we change within ourselves, uh, is basically a process that we're all healers. 
we all are either healing somebody else or somebody comes to us for healing. How about just sitting down and healing ourselves and saying, hey, wait a minute. I'm the sick one here. <laughs> you know, I, I and, and you know what? I have this power. I have this innate ability to listen to something greater than myself and apply it and then extend it to the world around me. And then you have the uh, analogy I gave to you earlier today. And I said I felt a, a shift in the force. You know, sh- this, this is from Star Wars. You know, you get the light thing going on here. Mm-hmm. And once one person, one person all over the world, one person opens their eyes and opens their hearts and opens their ears, a shift is created because they affect somebody else. And a ripple effect happens, and it's like, wow. Yeah, and I, and I want you to look in the world around us and see who are these profound shifters. We have children, children who have been shot or burned or whatever, you know, and, and coming out and say, defying they're you know they're going on with their lives we have uh children who are fighting and and standing up against governments for the environment we have children who are creating phenomenal scientific uh products or you know technologies to enhance the betterment of of water for for people who don't have access to water who these are children and and the only reason they can do it is because they are not buying the program anymore. They're mm-hmm. not buying the program of fear or I can't do it or only this company can own this or only that person can can make that law. And they're now we're entering a world where the children are going to become our leaders and we need to watch them and learn from them. And there's a great gift that they have to offer us if we would just get out of our heads of we know it all and look and say, help me, assist me, create a better world. And just before on that thought, remember back once, wherever age you are, you were once the children Mm. and you looked at your parents and didn't you say the same thing? Mm -hmm. I have ideas. Mm-hmm. I have visions, I have dreams, and our parents may have or may have not listened to us. Right. So now we're in the same position again. I mean, they may have had it with their own parents. Again, this is ancestral. Let's stop, let's break the pattern. Because it, it all comes back to that control and takeover of everything and the nastiness ha- develops out of that and the you know the the divisiveness uh, is created out of that and because everybody is saying my way is the right way or the only way or the way that it should be and if we get rid of all of those concepts which are part of that whole uh, patriarchal uh, paradigm and look at it and say let's co-create I want some you know some of this and I want some of that and I want a little blend of everything like mm-hmm. a giant toss salad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like the word co- I like the word of co-create you know because co-create. that's what we are you know we're all create is the word co-creators and I want uh, everybody to think about yeah and I, I know even as our shows are going on, and I was talking with Charlie, so things, as everybody is transforming, and everybody is awakening, some people fight it, but it will happen when they're ready. Others, you know, if you, you have some ideas and you finally get it, well, be gentle with the, the next person. That's their sole decision to awaken when they're ready. So always be the light or the hand that is offered to them, not in superiority, but as an equal. We're all equal in this circle, as I say, the circle of the world, this fear that we're contained in. 
There's nobody above us, nobody below us. There's nobody in front of us and nobody in back of us. All there is is this beautiful heart. Pulsating. Out. And, 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 and as I, you know, sort of make my last statement as we started out, we looked at all of the um, <sighs> painful and destructive activities that are going on around us now and realize that it's been happening for thousands of years. And uh, I want that just to say enough is enough. And enough is enough. And that's all you have to do is, is make that stand. Find it in your heart and the rest will be revealed to you. Yeah, it's it's sort of like the difference between a guided meditation and a non-guided meditation. Mm. Uh, the intention, set your intention and don't wait for somebody to guide you. Guide yourself. Allow yourself to be a participatory factor in that meditation. Yeah, you know, like I said, I always thank Charlie joined me on this because uh, we never know what's going to come out. And I know we were trying to say... How are we going to say the things that are in our head? But I think they came out that we needed to say. And just let you, th- again, that word, the thinker. Be the thinker. Sit there. Think. Make a choice. Stop. Get out of, the, you know, look at the tornado around you. Go within. Come out. Look. <laughs> think on all this. That's all we want you to do. So until next week. And until I drag Charlie back here with me, <laughs> which will be soon if I have my way, the mother speaks. <laughs> no. This is... Um, and the father stands to uh, embrace. Yeah. No, it's very balanced. I'm very blessed to have him here with me and as we talk and share. 